Loads coming up. We've got loads as Julie here as well this morning. First up, from cancelled flights to the Christmas rush. Uh, travel expert Owen Curry has the latest on the current situation. Owen, good morning to you. What should people, what's it like there at the moment? Should people be panicking? Oh, get to the gate. Uh, things reasonably fine this morning. A couple of delays, but not many. Okay. okay, Okay. well, we're going to get a little bit more on that and all of how you should prepare if you are traveling this Christmas. We're going to find out very, uh, all about that very yeah, shortly. we do not want the summer craziness again. Welcome back. Now, the Minister for Transport, Eamon Ryan, has been accused of being asleep at the wheel over weather-related issues at Dublin Airport, which saw hundreds of flights delayed or cancelled. And, of course, Matty McGraw, always ready with the line, says if he wasn't asleep, he'd want to be de-iced, is what he said <laughs> yesterday. A travel expert, Owen Curry, is here with the latest. Owen, oh, it's lovely to have you here. This travel is definitely becoming a political hot potato with what we have seen this year. So are we going to see repeats of what happened during the summer at specifically Dublin Airport We're again at Christmas? Dublin Airport tell us, and they're right, they're ready for Christmas, for the security queues, all of that sort of thing. The real problem we're in is every time we, we get ramped up to pre-pandemic levels of traffic and something gets tested, we fall over the tripwire. It happened with the security queues, it happened in the baggage hall, and it happened with de-icing last Friday. There was no reason. It wasn't a particularly cold day. It was just the first day that that number of flights had to be de-iced again at Dublin Airport. Some of the airlines do their own. Some of the airlines use third-party handlers. They were, nobody was ready for it. They actually, everybody just started... And when you lose that first wave, there's a first wave of flights in Dublin Airport. It starts around with the Frankfurt flight and it goes through to about 9 o'clock. And if you lose that, you're not going to get it back during the day. So everybody was in trouble. And then 7 o'clock in the evening, Ryanair cancelled a whole lot of inbound as well. Because quite clearly, the, the modern aviation works that Ryanair don't fly to a city and back again. Every Ryanair aircraft takes off six times a day. Mm -hmm. So... They, once you, uh, an aircraft runs into trouble in one airport, and it happened again on Monday with the snow in Stansted, knock-on flights yeah. don't get affected, that you don't expect. We've had a boxing team in Hamburg trying to get home since Monday, right. still in the airport. And yeah. that's a Hamburg to Dublin flight that was unaffected by uh, anything except the fact that the, the aircraft was in the wrong city. We have something like, or we had over, uh, on Friday we had about 20,000 passengers in the wrong city. That went grew, oh, you know, six, eight thousand on Saturday. We had about three or four thousand yesterday. We flights gone today to France. We've lost Charles de Gaulle and Orly because of snow in France. So every so, single small, these are small problems. The aviation's good at recovering, getting all of these sorted. But they're not small problems if you haven't done it for three years. And that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, but the lack of preparedness. And, and even, like, that's Friday. What, 140 flights are cancelled yeah, around last awesome. Friday. Yeah, and like 50 or so on Monday. I even just looked at it this morning. Arrivals coming in. There's 28 arrivals before 9 o'clock. 12 delayed. of them yeah. are delayed or cancelled. <laughs> like so, we have five so, inbound cancellations and four outbound today. We lost the Washington, second Washington flight yesterday. So Maryland, whenever so that, you hear people having a go at Eamon Ryan, the Minister for Transport, saying you're asleep at the wheel, like, should the DA, like, should they not have been prepared for this? But there, it, where, where the blame gets laid, um, Eamon Ryan isn't in the, working in the baggage hall. What's happened is there's so many strands. It's a complex industry. And we're only learning really how well it fits together, how complex it is, and how well it fits together when it starts going wrong. And that's what we've been learning since the... But all, yeah. all businesses are having to deal with this. Yeah, but hold so, on. Like, is it not a domino effect? Businesses. If you've got weather and you can't take off from France, obviously your flight isn't going to come into Ireland. You can't go, well, that's Eamon Ryan's fault. It's, it's, it's dom weather. dominoes on top of dominoes. We had baggage hall problems on Friday because the staffing in the baggage hall was done by the same people who de-ice who were already being held up. And you well, had, now that's well, an issue. You go. So that's all, an of issue. That, all of these things... Bits of aviation that you don't expect to start going wrong go wrong because People someone else... People the de-icing are meant to be in charge of the baggage. I mean, no, it's a staffing issue in general. I mean, it's not exactly the same people, but the companies are okay. dealing with it. Has that, uh, been, has that been resolved? As we saw, when you're working in yeah. an airport, you need an awful lot of, cover, of, of guard the clearance, all that kind of stuff. Is that issue resolved? Because you're saying that they don't have enough teams out there, essentially. And uh, Staffing is still a problem. It's still and, a problem. And remains a problem, and will remain a problem, not just in Ireland, but right across Europe. It's Manchester security queues 
are the running story in aviation yeah. in England at the moment. We've got uh, airport problems all over Europe. So it's not... Like Schiphol in Amsterdam, that's pretty bad. Schiphol and Heathrow were the, were the headlines. They were, yeah. they were the Champions League of airport malfunction, dysfunction this summer. Yeah. But there are lots of other airports, smaller. In Toronto internationally was pretty much up there. The airport clearances was a small thing last November, which, you know, everybody just looked at and said, oh, they've, they've upgraded the airport clearances. And then it became a big issue when we couldn't get people well, airside. Okay. So, if this, so if there are people at the moment, I mean, we can complain about it oh, all yeah. we like, oh, yeah. but there are, like, this is a no. busy week. Next week, though, is going to be ramping up in the week after this that. This is not a busy week, Christmas. Tommy. This is a really, this mm. is one of the quietest weeks of the year. Oh, and, right. in you know, obviously not compared with COVID, but pre-COVID, this, it's then this Christmas rush So the comes. rush. So now, we should already people, have, like, what, is there advice for people who are traveling over the next week or two? Is there anything really that they can do? Okay, here's a problem. Here's the thing. People showing up early in the airport, you can actually cause as many problems showing up too early as showing up too late. So keep your, your time, your arrival time at the two hours for short haul and three hours for long haul. If the flight gets delayed, you have your rights you know, but what uh, you have a certain amount, you have rights to food, all of those sort mm. of things. You, could, you have rights to overnight accommodation. The airline is contracted to get you to where you're supposed to be. But what I've seen happen is that in the old days, you know, when fewer people travel, the airline contacted everyone, put them in a hotel, bust yeah. them there, bust them back. Even the legacy, the old flag carrier airlines aren't doing that anymore. There's an incre uh, the increased acceptance by airlines that you sort yourself out, yeah. get an alternative way if you can, keep the receipts, we'll reimburse you. Oddly enough, they used to discourage this. Now they're at a stage mm -hmm. where they're saying, you know, if you do it, we'll, we'll pay you. Because the, the sheer catch-up is proving much bigger problem for the airlines than they expected for their own for for reasons of their own staffing and their own aircraft getting stranded yeah. in the wrong place and all of those other knock-on problems like strikes and yeah. go slows and they're they're all lurking around in the background yeah. as well it's just been a a, a series of problems. Every time there's a solution, another problem arising in aviation. So we're just wondering, um, for because, you know, the airport used to be a lovely experience. Now it's quite stressful. You know, people are very it stressed about it. can still be a lovely experience, yeah. It, it can, um, but we're just wondering, you know, if you've had issues in the airport, whether it is you had to get reimbursed or overnight stay and you've been fighting oh, yeah. 0896 111111. Love to hear from you on that. But what is going on with the, you must be talking in the industry about why airports can't recruit, because it used to be seen as my God, I got a job in the airport for three months over Christmas. This is amazing. What, like what? Because this is this seems to be all over Europe all and over indeed Europe, internationally yeah. that they cannot get staff. The baggage hall isn't regarded as a very premium sort of job to get in, but it's airports aren't the only ones dealing with the recruitment problems. Even at pilot level, there's recruitment issues oh, yeah. and getting clearance. So it's it's you know we are in a full employment economy. We're in this very strange situation, and. All of the calculations that were done for traffic for the summer seem to have been, by the airport, seem to have been wrong. The one airline that got her absolutely right was, was Ryanair. They kept their pilots, they kept their cabin crew, they kept their aircraft certified. They've reaped the benefit. They're now going to be something like, by a margin of 30 million, the largest airline in, in Europe in wow. terms of passengers carried when the figures come out in a couple of weeks' time. Very important, uh, flightrights.ie, they're the arbiters. Okay. If, you're, if you've gone to go first to your airline and if you've still got problems getting resolved, flightrights.ie, and I emphasize the .ie because there are gougers out there putting up flight rights websites and charging people for it so that, you know, if you Google flight rights, you might end up in the wrong one. Wrong Go one. to the official government-appointed arbiter, the Commissioner of Aviation, flightrights.ie. They're the ones to sort out issues with your airline. But at the moment, even the advice is, if you're stranded, the, don't follow third-party apps. Sometimes um, a flight shows up as cancelled on a Dublin airport or a mm. flight stats or flight radar 24 um, app that isn't actually cancelled. And sometimes, as happened at the weekend, an airline manages to get a flight off that they previously notified as cancelled. So the airline is the one with the information. They've got your email, they've okay. got your 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 text. Yeah. So follow the, Keep them. An eye on that. Rem, shelter in place, they will sort you out. It's their job to sort you out. But if you decide to go it alone, keep the receipts, and 
go back to the airline and listen, the okay. way it's working Thank at the you. moment, the airline is paying the compensation. Thank you. Oh, and listen, as always, some great advice there and really, really interesting.